I'd like to uh, introduce the NEC Essex Aurora Tsubasa as a candidate for the class of uh, scalable vector architectures. Um, this uh, work and uh, the poster which will be presented tomorrow uh, is a cooperation between uh, NEC and uh, a compiler design lab uh, from um, uh, Saarland University in Germany. So NEC used to produce uh, um, vector computers, uh, vector supercomputers since more than 30 years. We have a long tradition in these. Uh, the machines used to look like on the right side of the slide, uh, they were mainframe sized machines uh, with more or less fancy design. They had proprietary hardware, proprietary interconnect, proprietary operating system, of course, a proprietary compiler and so on. Now, this is completely different. Uh, SX Aurora is now a PCI Express card containing a CPU and a little bit of dump uh, hardware to keep the CPU running. It's a high performance computing vector CPU. Uh, it has a very high memory bandwidth of 1.2 terabyte per second. And it's actually the first CPU with uh, six HBM2s on die. Um, uh, such that we have uh, 40, up to 48 gig gigabytes of HBM2 memory on this card. The CPU sticks in uh, a server. Um, well, actually, a server can, uh, an x86-64 server can have uh, one, two, four, or eight of these uh, PCI Express cards. And the server's CPUs are used for operating system offloading. So this, the server CPUs are using, are doing the system calls of the programs, of the native programs running on the vector engine. Um, usage model of this is uh, you can have a vector engine native C, C++, or Fortran codes. We have compilers for these, uh, parallelized with OpenMP or MPI or you can have hybrid programming models. Uh, more details to the CPU, it's, uh, it features only eight cores. So these are rather powerful cores. Um, they uh, have, each of the cores uh, has 64 vector registers. These are very long vector registers with 256 times 64 bits. Um, um, we have uh, three fused multiply add vector units there, two arithmetic logical units, a divide unit. And each core, of course, has a scalar processing unit. Uh, there is a shared vector cache on there of 60 megabytes, and uh, the, the, the vector ISA is very comprehensive, I would say. Now, uh, vector pipes, uh, in our CPU, look slightly different than on uh, than the SIMD style you are used to. You might be used to. We are combining SIMD with pipelining. Therefore, a vector register might be regarded as consisting of eight uh, 32 times 64 bit wide SIMD fronts. So uh, each of the planes in the in the figure is a vector register. Um, this way. Uh, fuse multiply add instruction as is depicted in here uh, actually uh, one instruction triggers a lot of uh, operations and a lot of data movement this is very power efficient that you see that you can see on the diagram in the uh, lower right side of, of, of the slide and it leads to high sustained performance um, so um, we like LLVM, we would like to aim uh, towards LLVM because it's a good compiler and I think this is a very good match for the LLVM SVE effort. So we would like to join the ARM SVE and the RISC-V effort. Currently we have a VE backend um, um, based on the, old I on, on the current IR and uh, this is coupled with a region vectorizer from Simon Moll and uh, we can even produce some data. And here is how we stand actually in the LLVM SVE context. We are somewhere in between RISC-V V and ARM SV. We have a max vector length register, which is uh, read-only fixed, uh, like ARM has it. Um, we do have dynamic vector length, uh, like RISC-V. Uh, and we have mask, vector mask registers, like ARM SV. Please join us at the poster session tomorrow. Thank you.